video, we will talk about data persistence in Docker. How can we persist data so that when you start a container over and over again, you will have access to the same data. Now, this is particularly critical when you run database containers where uh, if the container is shut down and then later restarted, you don't want to lose the contents of your database. In this video, it's I'm going to make use of MongoDB, a NoSQL document database, as an example to illustrate the issues that arise when we use database containers in Docker. I have dealt with MongoDB extensively in my Coursera courses. If you need more details about MongoDB, you can consult the documentation right behind me. Also, it so happens that the Docker Hub already contains a Mongo-based Docker image available for us. So this is a very easy way of deploying a Mongo database. So we're going to make use of this Docker image in order to illustrate some issues that arise when we run database containers, and then we'll see how we can use data persistence uh, using volumes to solve the problem. Going to a terminal, let's go ahead and then pull down the Mongo image from Docker Hub. Now, if you run the container with the MongoDB as the image, and if the image doesn't exist locally, it is automatically pulled down from Docker Hub. But I wanted to illustrate the Docker pull command to pull down an image from uh, a registry like Docker Hub. So let's go ahead and pull down from the Docker Hub the Mongo uh, image. Now you can spe specifically request for a specific version of the Mongo image. I'm just going to download the latest version there. So let me go ahead and then um, download the Mongo image to my computer. Once the Mongo image is downloaded, we can go ahead and then fire up a Mongo container. So to do that at the prompt, let me type docker run minus D. Um, by default, Mongo runs at port number 27017. So we're going to leave it there. Uh, we are not going to explicitly specify that port number. It will be automatically exported. So I'm going to just use that directly. So I'm going to um, give this a name as MongoDB and then launch the Mongo image there. And now this is running in the background. Opening my Docker dashboard, I can see that the MongoDB um, container is up and running. In order to interact with the uh, MongoDB instance running in this container, I can make use of the Mongo shell. Now, we will fire up a, an interactive um, bash shell that runs in this MongoDB container and then use that to fire up a Mongo shell to interact with this Mongo. So to do that, at the prompt, type docker exec minus it MongoDB bash. And you would see that this will start up a uh, bash shell that is running inside the MongoDB container. Now I will be able to make a list and um, see the contents of the files in this container. I can also um, list the slash data slash db folder. That is exactly where my MongoDB contents will be stored in this MongoDB container. But recall that this is within the containers file system. And the moment I shut down this container, all these will be gone and they will no longer be accessible. So even if I start a Mongo shell, let me go ahead and start a Mongo shell to interact with the MongoDB uh, running there. And so now my Mongo shell is up and running. I can then check which database 
is currently accessible and then uh, right now it is the standard the test database so let me go ahead and insert an item into the test database so let me go ahead and say insert name test value i'm just inserting a document into the database here i can just uh, use the find pretty to check and make sure that this document has actually been added into the Mongo database section. And indeed, that is added to the Mongo database. Let's go ahead and then exit the shell and exit the bash shell there. And now your Mongo um, database should contain this one document there. Let's go ahead and then shut down the Mongo container. Uh, I'm going to use the Docker dashboard to shut down the Mongo container. Now, let me restart the Mongo container one more time and see if the document that we inserted into the Mongo database still exists. So I'm going to go ahead and then restart the Mongo um, container one more time and you can see that it is now running. Now I will need to start a bash shell to access the Mongo container. In the previous uh, uh, step I had shown you how to use the docker exec command in order to start up a bash shell running in the MongoDB container. Now an alternative way is if you have the Docker dashboard up and running, or even if you have Kitematic, if you're running Docker toolbox, you would have access to a button here, which will start up a bash shell like this. So that's another way of starting up a bash shell. So if you are a GUI person, that's the way you would start up a bash shell. Well, uh, the only way to interact with the Mongo database is to start up the Mongo um, shell inside a um, bash shell there. So I've started up my Mongo there and then I would uh, check that the database is the test database. Let me go ahead and check what is contained in the test database and you can see that this test database is empty. It doesn't contain the document that I inserted previously. The reason for this is that the Mongo database uh, contents were never persisted. So once you shut down the container, all the contents are wiped out. How do we persist data from a Docker container? There are several ways of doing it. A volume is one way of persisting data. We will see the use of a volume in the next step. So let me go ahead and exit from the Mongo um, shell and then exit from the bash shell and then we'll go ahead and shut down the Mongo container and I am now going to attach a volume to the Mongo database. Now one way of uh, creating a volume in uh, Docker is to use the Docker volume create command there. Now let me just go ahead and then list the existing volumes in my Docker um, daemon and you can see that there are some existing volumes there. I don't know what they are there for. They must have been created by the Mongo. Let me go ahead and then delete all these volumes, clear up everything and then and then restart. That should be docker volume prune command to remove all the unused docker volumes. And so let me go ahead and clean that up and then again check the volumes and I see that there are no more volumes there. I can just go ahead and use docker volume create in order to create a volume. 
if the volume doesn't already exist and you use the docker run command to attach a volume to the container, the volume will be automatically created. So I'm going to use that approach to create a volume. So let me go ahead and then um, rerun the Mongo um, container. So let me say docker run minus D my, to attach a volume, we will say minus V and then you would supply a volume name. So uh, I will just say MongoDB wall as the volume name and then this volume will have to be mapped into a folder in the Mongo container and we saw that the data slash db folder is where Mongo uh, uh, stores the database contents by default so I'm going to map this volume into the data slash db. Now how do we make use of volumes? I'm going to discuss more about the concepts behind this in the next video. So let me go ahead and attach the volume and then start up the MongoDB container like that. So I am attaching a volume here using the minus V option there. So let me go ahead and start the um, Mongo container and you would see that the Mongo container should be up and running. I can see that the Mongo container is running. I can check the logs of the Mongo container by just clicking on this and then you would see that you have a bunch of logs that are generated by the Mongo DB that is running in this container. So you, that is one way to check the logs. You can inspect the container if you want. You can check the container and see what all is available in the container. So this is one way of uh, checking the contents. And then when you check the contents, you would see that the data slash DB folder, you have mounted this particular volume there. Now, why is it stored there? And uh, where exactly is this folder? We'll come to that in the next video. So um, shows that the volume is now attached to, to the Mongo database. Let me go ahead and start a uh, shell here. And then in there, I'm going to uh, start the Mango REPL or the Mongo shell. Um, and then let me go ahead and then insert a document into the test database it doesn't matter what document you insert i'm just inserting a random document here into the database and then i can check and make sure that this document exists in the database. So let's go ahead and then shut down this MongoDB uh, container. Let me exit the shell. And then we'll go ahead and shut down the Mongo container. And once we have shut down the Mongo container, I'm going to again restart the same Mongo container and then re-add, uh, attach the volume to the newly started Mongo container with a reason. I want to show you how data can be persisted in a volume. So to do that, let me go ahead and run the MongoDB database. Now, I will show you another way of attaching the volume. Another way of attaching a volume is to call, uh, is to use the mount option. The mount option takes um, parameters like this. This is one way of supplying the
the parameters of the volume to mount the volume there. Let's go ahead and run the database and then you can see that the Mongo container is up and running. Note the syntax for the mount. So this is another way. Now minus V option is one way of mounting a volume, but this is an option of mounting any kind of data persistence. We'll discuss more about it in the next video. Um, here we are explicitly saying that the source is that um, volume and it is mapped to the destination folder specified there and the type is a volume mount there. And you can now see that the MongoDB container is up and running. Let's inspect the MongoDB container and you can see again that the volume here, MongoDB wall, is mounted at the data DB folder. Let's go ahead and start a bash shell for this container. And then let me start the Mongo REPL. And then let's do DB test find pretty. And you see that the document that I inserted in the earlier run of the Mongo container still exists because this data has been persisted into the MongoDB volume. So this um, exercise is to illustrate to you how you can use volumes to persist data in a container. This is especially useful when you're running database containers and you want to persist the database across container restarts. Now this approach applies to any kind of database that you run. In this case, I am in illustrating using the Mongo uh, database. You can use a MySQL database or Postgres um, SQL database or any other kind of database uh, um, container and you would uh, use a similar approach for persisting the data from your database container. Let's go ahead and exit the Mongo REPL and then stop the Mongo uh, DB container there. So we'll go ahead and remove the MongoDB container. I am also going to list the volumes and you can see that there is a MongoDB volume that exists there. I'm going to go ahead and then remove all these volumes. I don't need them anymore. So I will use the Docker volume prune to remove all the unused volumes. Let me go ahead and list the volumes and you see that I, all the volumes are cleared now. Now that is one way of clearing out unused volumes from your Docker installation. We will move on to the next video where I will explain to you about volumes in more detail.